Hey, I'm looking to get a quote for air monitoring for silica. Wait, how much is it? Well, have you tried using OSHA's Table 1? What's OSHA's Table 1? I'll tell you about it. Hi, I'm Sergio with Arthur and Hansen, and for this week, we're talking about OSHA's Table 1. In 2017, the new crystalline silica standard for construction went into effect. The new standard lowered the permissible exposure limit to 50 micrograms per cubic meter of crystalline silica over an eight hour workday. The standard requires employers to control exposures below the permissible exposure limit in one of two ways. One, follow the specified controls in OSHA's table one chart, which we'll be reviewing first. Or two, implement alternative controls, which requires your company to do independent air monitoring and is usually much more of a hassle. So what is OSHA's table one? and why should we use it? Think of table one as a list of prescriptions that matches 18 common construction tasks that tells you effective dust control methods and respirator requirements for those specific tasks. OSHA has already done all the work to prove that these methods are effective at controlling the hazards related to these tasks. Let's go through an example together. First, we must understand the equipment being used and the task in which it is being used for. And of course, you will need to factor in the material that's involved in the task and whether it contains crystalline silica or not. Let's look at the 12 tasks on the table one chart, which reads handheld grinders for uses other than mortar removal. As you can see, the first column covers the equipment being used and the task is being used for. Now we move on to the next column, which provides engineering and work practice control methods to implement. It tells us the location of the task and the necessary controls for said location. You can see for this task, we must either use a grinder equipped with integrated water delivery system that continuously feeds water to the grinding surface, or we may use a grinder equipped with commercially available shroud and a dust collection system. These would be the engineering controls that we must implement. The administrative control we must implement in addition is simply operating and maintaining the tool in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions to minimize dust emissions. The third column, OSHA lists the required minimum respiratory protection and its minimum assigned protection factor, or APF, for the task, whether it lasts less or more than four hours. So if we use the first set of controls we mentioned, which are providing the integrated water system on the grinder in an outdoor area, we can see that respiratory protection is not necessary. Now, if we use a second set of controls, using an adequate dust collection system, we see that the respiratory protection is not needed if used outdoors. However, if you perform the task indoors or in an enclosed area for longer than four hours, respiratory protection with an APF of 10 must be provided. And this is how you could use table one to protect workers based on the task they're performing. Of course, there's alternative controls that you can implement rather than using and implementing table one. As mentioned at the start of the video, the alternative controls require your company to do independent air monitoring and provide objective data proving that the controls you're using are effective. And these controls should not just be relying on a respirator to protect the worker. This means conducting an exposure assessment that requires industrial hygienists or other safety professionals to conduct air monitoring, send samples of the air to the lab, wait on results for those air samples, and document the results to prove that the permissible exposure limit is not being exceeded. As you can see, coming up with your own alternative exposure controls is an intensive and sometimes expensive process and is one that should be avoided if possible. No matter if you choose to follow OSHA's Table 1 for silica control or you choose to use alternative controls, all employers with exposure to silica are required to maintain good housekeeping on their sites, have a written silica exposure plan, provide medical surveillance, communicate the hazards to their employees, and provide training, and keep records related to this requirement. If you need any help with meeting any of the requirements we just mentioned, feel free to contact us using the information provided below. We hope this video has helped give you a better understanding of the new silica standard and how to control silica hazards by using OSHA's Table 1. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and it was helpful. Leave a comment below and let us know what topics you want to see us cover in the future. Also, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms so you don't miss out on any more tips and tricks. And until next time, be safe and thank you.